Hey, on Property Matters, we're always getting you a slice of all the buzz that's developing in the property space. Right now, we're going to do just that in Real News. The union budget of 2011 has failed to impress real estate players. Both developers and experts have expressed that larger issues pertaining to the sector have been ignored by the finance minister. The sector's impending demand for an industry status continued to be overlooked by the finance ministry. Apart from this, the budget remains silent on exemptions under Section 80IA and 80IB, which are significant to the construction of units that are sized below 1200 square feet. The government did announce extension of the 1% interest subvention scheme, which is likely to boost demand for affordable homes. Apart from the government, some private developers are also banking on the growth of affordable home segment. Tata Housing has announced it would invest up to 3,000 crore rupees next fiscal to develop affordable homes across the country. The company has already five projects in the affordable segment and plans to launch seven to eight more projects. Tata Housing has formed a subsidiary Smart Value Homes to develop affordable houses in the price range of 5 to 35 lakh rupees. Apart from Mumbai, Pune and Ahmedabad, Tata Housing also plans to start projects in Punjab under the Public-Private Partnership or the PPP model. Now that's a slice of the action in the property market this time around, but the big news coming in from the union budget for the fiscal 2011. Some mega issues that needed to be addressed in the real estate industry, now those weren't touched upon, but what was uh, addressed is the issue of affordable homes. With a 1% interest subsidy, now that getting redesigned and revamped, there will be plenty more affordable homes, so that's the good news. Now how exactly does union budget 2011-12 affect our real estate investments? In Realty Check this week, my colleague Samira Jalali finds out. Proposed to reduce the current surcharge of 7.5% on domestic companies to 5%. On Feb 28, 2011, the much-awaited union budget was announced. No rollback on service tax, no industry status and no tax exemptions left the sector pretty disappointed. To further stimulate the growth in the housing sector, I am liberalizing the existing scheme of interest subvention of 1% on housing loans by extending it to the housing loan up to Rs 15 lakh where the cost of the house does not exceed 25 lakh from the present limit of 10 lakh and 20 lakh respectively. But this announcement by the finance minister has come as good news for prospective home buyers like Mukta Lal. A software engineer, Mukta resides with her parents in a two-bedroom apartment in the satellite town of Ghaziabad in the national capital region. For a while now, Mukta has been thinking of moving into a bigger apartment. She is happy with the finance minister's announcement of a 1% subsidy on loans up to 15 lakh rupees and feels it's time now to finally make that property purchase. Quite interested in buying a new house, but uh, because of some hiccups, I couldn't buy that. But uh, with uh, the benchmark been increased to 25 lakhs with 1% discount, um, I'm more interested for it now. Like Mukta, there are many home buyers who are cheering this move. This 1% interest subsidy has enhanced their chances of investing in a property. With the finance minister raising the value of loan amount from 10 lakh to 15 lakh rupees for houses up to 25 lakh rupees, more property investors are likely to benefit from the subsidy. While the move is not likely to impact properties in the bigger cities, it will boost the property markets that are in the periphery of major metros and the Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities. Home buyers in small towns are also welcoming the Rural Mortgage Risk Fund set up under the Rajiv Avas Yojana. This scheme guarantees the economically weaker sections a housing loan by enhancing their creditworthiness. A very good move and it should be scaled up, uh, which really means that if you are taking a loan, uh, and you are the lower income group, that you get a kind of a insurance from this fund uh, that in case you default, this fund will, uh, you know, uh, it stands you as a guarantee to pay that. Uh, which means the credit worthiness of that individual goes up. For any new property market to develop, infrastructure holds the key. 
In a country that needs 1 trillion US dollars to fulfill all its infrastructure needs, a scheme like Rural Risk Mortgage Fund isn't quite enough to lure developers to small property markets. Although this year's budget did put a lot of thrust on infrastructure development, for the moment most developers are sticking to the bigger cities which have good infrastructure in place. Once there's infrastructure in place, wherein land which is much cheaper becomes more accessible and more attractive to the home user, then you'll see a lot of uh, real estate activity in those areas, maybe in tier 3 areas, in tier 4 areas. While Budget 2011 has come as a disappointment for many realtors and property investors, some of these announcements by the Finance Minister are steps in the right direction. We've been talking to a lot of experts in the field and all of them seem to suggest that this is a move by the government in the right direction to get more and more people affordable homes of their own to live in. It should also give a fillip to the entire real estate industry. If you have questions on the impact of union budget on your own property investments, well, drop in a line at our email ID, which is propertymatters at utvmoney.com. We'll take another quick breather here on the show, but up on the other side, we're showcasing one of the most beautiful houses in the country. Do so stick around.